Hello everyone. Today we are going to discuss about another animal fiber that is the silk fiber. So today we will be discussing about silk. So silk fibers are also animal fibers. They are obtained from animals. Now which animal it is? It is silkworm. Silkworm spin the silk fibers. It is the silkworm which produces this silk. Now the rearing of silkworms for obtaining silk is called sericulture. Should keep in mind this. What is sericulture? It is the rearing of the silkworms. In the last class we have discussed about the wool fiber. There we have discussed about the rearing and the breeding of the sheep. And here we will be discussing about the rearing of the silkworm. Clear? Now let us begin. The life history of silk moth. Now you might be thinking in the earlier slide it was a silk worm and now here it is a silk moth. It is the same thing. So let us see first. The female silk moth lays eggs from which it hatches larva which are caterpillars or silk worms. Now silk moth is somewhat similar to that of a butterfly but it is not of the butterfly breed it is a different breed but the process is same it looks also similar kind so let us see from the diagram you can see this is a silk moth a male silk moth and a female silk moth after they go through the process of breeding they lay eggs on the leaves of the mulberry tree and then from this X it hatches into a caterpillar or it is also called a silk worm since it is this X are laid by the silk moth clear now they grow in size and when the caterpillar is ready to enter the next stage of its life history is called pupa after laying X it hatches into a silk worm and after uh, going through a period of life or a next stage of life that will be the pupa the next stage is called the pupa although the pupa is not shown here in the diagram but the next stage after turning to a silkworm or a caterpillar the next stage is developing into a pupa now it first what happens in the pupa stage it first weaves to hold itself and then it swings its head from side to side in the form of figure of eight. Here, to form a pupa, it has to weave. Just like uh, we are covering ourselves with a blanket, you can say. Similar to that, the pupa is also formed by weaving around the caterpillar. The caterpillar weaves around itself a, ma a material or a fabric, you can say or a fiber you can say it it wraps up itself how it wraps up by swinging its head from side to side in the form of eight in the form of eight in this way it swings its head the numeral eight how it is written it swings its heads in that way and in this way it spins itself or wraps its wrap up wrapping itself up it wraps up and then it forms the pupa now during this movements of the head the caterpillar secretes fiber that's what i've said it secretes some fiber of which is made of a protein and which hardens on exposure to air and becomes silk fiber so during the this movement in the shape of eight it uh, wraps up itself with which with what material it wraps up it wraps up itself with the silk material it is nothing but it is a protein that has been secreted from the uh, silkworm and then this protein is secreted in the form of fiber and this fiber with this help of the fiber it wraps up itself after wrapping it up after a period of time it becomes hardened due to exposure of air and then it becomes what we know as the silk fiber it is a very costly fiber you, can, you know now Soon the caterpillar completes 
covering itself by the silk fiber. This covering is called cocoon. Yes. After covering up itself, the pupa, when it covers it up, then it forms a cocoon. This is called a cocoon. You can see fully covered. This thing is fully covered inside this. Now, the further development of the moth continues inside the cocoon. Yes. Inside this, it then develops itself. It takes some time, a period of time. It develops itself into what we know as the adult silk moth. So in this way, the whole life cycle continues. Inside the, uh, this is uh, in the figure it is shown, inside the uh, cocoon, how it develops. So this cocoon is just like a shield for him. Shield for this uh, caterpillar or the silkworm. And everything develops inside this. Just like a baby develops inside the womb of a mother. So this cocoon acts similar to that. Now next moving on. The silk yarn or the thread. That is a silk thread you can see. Is obtained from the cocoon of the silk moth. This cocoon when it. Uh, you can say when it develops fully then this after developing of the silk worm inside the cocoon the silk worm gradually turns into an adult butterfly so what is left behind is the cocoon so from this cocoon only we can get the silk yarn or the silk thread or the silk fiber also you can say now there are a variety of silk moths which looks different from one another and the silk yarn the yell is different in texture that is coarse, smooth and shiny. So depending upon, just like in the case of the ship, there are different breeds. Here also there are different varieties of silk moth. And depending on the variety, the material or the fiber of the silk differs. It can be coarse, that is a little bit rough. It can be smooth also and it can be shiny. Depending on the type of the silk moth, which is given the cocoon. So there are some examples like Sar silk, Muga silk, Kosa silk. So these are some of the types of the silk. So why this differs? Because the silk obtained are from different types of silk moths. Not the same type. Since they are different types, so the silk quality or the variety also differs. They are obtained from cocoons spun by different types of moths. Now the most common silk is the, most common silk moth is the mulberry silk moth. Already have seen. Generally, they develop this in the trees of the or the leaves of the mulberry trees. So, the mulberry silk moth is the most common silk moth. You can say, or you can say it is the most common silk also. Now, the silk fiber from the cocoon of this moth is soft, lustrous, and elastic, and can be dyed in beautiful colors. It is the most common because it is very smooth. The silk fiber that we obtain from this. Mulberry silk moth is very smooth, it is lustrous, that is shiny, and then elastic, that is elasticity, and also we can color it in different colors, dye it in different colors. The next is sericulture or culture of silkworm is very old occupation of India. India produces plenty of silk on a commercial scale. Sericulture is very popular, especially in our own state, Assam. There is a place called Hualkusi where this sericulture is done in a large commercial scale. So you all know about this place. The Muga silk comes from there. So this is a very uh, good, uh, you can say, commercial business. It has become a good commercial business nowadays. The developing of the, uh, or the culturing of the silk worm. Or the rearing also, you can say, of the silk worm. So that's it in this video. I, hold, I hope you all have understood this. You can go through your textbook. It's very simple. It's just about the uh, life cycle or life history. Life history means it is the life cycle of the silkworm. So that's it then. Thank you and have a nice day.